Last year I reviewed the HP Spectre 13 and there was no doubt about it, it was one of the best looking laptops I've ever reviewed. It was simply stunning, but there were many shortcomings and I couldn't give it my buy recommendation. Fast forward to late 2017, HP just updated the Spectre line to include the HP Spectre 13 in a new color with a touchscreen and a new quad-core processor. Hey everybody, it's Andrew and this is my review of the HP Spectre 13 late 2017. Let's get this show on the road, shall we? Here's what's new with the HP Spectre 13. It's a 13.3 inch display. It now comes in a 4K option, which is what I have here. And it's also a touch display, something you weren't able to get last year. They've improved upon an already stunning design and outfitted it with an eighth generation quad core CPU. It's the Core i5-8250U. And it's also available in a Core i7. Now the unit I have has 8GB of RAM, but you can outfit it up to 16GB in that option when you go to check out. Now I have 256GB of PCIe NVMe SSD storage, but you can go up to 1TB of storage. Now they've increased the battery to a 43 watt hour battery and it comes with a 65 watt charger. We'll talk about the battery life later on in this review. It starts at $13.99, but I've seen Black Friday deals as low as $11.89, so I would check out the links below for the latest pricing. The 4K option will cost you an extra $150, and I'm not sure if you need to go that route. We'll talk more about that in just a little bit, but I do have to say that the 4K display is simply stunning. It comes in the dark ash silver and the all-new ceramic white, which is what I have here. And speaking of that display, it is a 13.3 inch IPS glossy touch display that's new this year as I stated earlier and it's covered in Gorilla Glass NBT. Now I have the 4K model with a resolution of 3840 by 2160 and that's a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. It covers the color gamut pretty well at 96% sRGB and 75% Adobe RGB. I would say brightness is okay at 297 nits, good for both indoor and for mostly outdoor use except in direct sunlight, that will be an issue. For the most part, thanks to its glossy display. This is a very sharp 4K display, the blacks are very deep, the colors really pop and are very vibrant. The question you have to ask yourself is, do you need that 4K option, when the 1080p panel from what I'm hearing is excellent. Other reviewers out there that have gotten their hands on this and have reviewed it have said the same. But there is no denying that this 4K display is simply stunning. And I love the fact that they retain those very thin bezels, the trend we've been seeing in late 2017 and going into 2018. It's good to see that. And I like the fact that it now has the touchscreen. It worked really well for scrolling, pinch to zoom, and all the things you'd want to do with a touchscreen, something that was missing from last year's model. Now packaging is very premium as we've come to expect with the Spectre line and this is no exception. And they include a sleeve in a matching color in the box, that's a nice touch. Holding the unit for the first time, you realize how thin and light this device really is. And it surprises me every time since I've held this before, so it shouldn't really shock me. But this thing is so gorgeous, it really does feel premium. You get a setup guide, which you probably don't even need, but they do include it nonetheless. And you get some customer support with warranty information as well. You get a USB Type-A to Type-C adapter, which you'll need since this doesn't have any USB Type-A ports on the device itself. And you get a 65 watt adapter, and it charges the device pretty fast. It took about an hour and 15 minutes to fully charge this device. And it comes with a USB Type-C cord. The good news is you can use any USB Type-C. You're not limited to the one they bundle this with. And unlike Apple, they actually include the extension cord, which is also a nice touch.
Now all the ports are located on the back of the device. Let's start off with the headset jack. It's 3.5 millimeters. It worked well with no interference. I have no complaints as far as that's concerned. And you get three USB Type-C ports. The two here you see are Thunderbolt 3 supported, which is always good to see. And the last one does data charge and display out. No micro SD card slot, no Type-A port. On the back you get nothing but the gold trim. It actually looks really nice on this model. I really like the keyboard. Now at 1.3 millimeters of key travel, it was comfortable to type on. The keys felt good, they had a clickiness to them and had a good tactile feedback. And it has multi-level backlighting. The trackpad uses synaptics drivers over say something like the precision drivers, but nonetheless worked really well. Two finger scrolling worked well. Windows 10 gestures worked as advertised. So this is the front-facing webcam on the all-new HP Spectre 13, and it's okay. It's a 720p, 30 frames per second camera. Not the greatest in low-light situations. It's a bit grainy. I was expecting a little bit better on this high-end machine. It's certainly passable. You can use it for Skype and video conferencing when you need it, but a little bit disappointing in terms of why not are we not getting a full HD webcam on this? A 1080p web webcam would have been better. So this has been the front-facing webcam on the HP Spectre 13, late 2017. Now there is no fingerprint sensor for Windows Hello Login, but you do get a Windows Hello camera and it did work well. Setup was easy and pretty much worked as advertised. HP moved the speakers to the top of the keyboard, giving it a smaller footprint. Now, speaking of those speakers, they're Bang & Olufsen branded, and they sound pretty good considering this is an extremely thin and light laptop. Now, let's hear them in action. It runs Windows 10 Home, has 8 gigabytes of RAM, and has a 256 gigabyte PCIe NVMe SSD. It's Samsung, and here's how it did on the Crystal Disk Mark test. Reads and writes were good, not outstanding, but certainly solid. And it did okay on the Geekbench 4 test, although a little bit below some other Core i5-8250s that I've been testing as of late. For those gamers out there, this is not a gaming machine. Please keep that in mind. You can do some gaming. The results here from the 3D Mark scores, the Fire Strike, the Cloudgate, Ice Storm Extreme, and the Ice Storm Test, certainly indicative of that. But again, don't think you're going to be playing any kind of AAA gaming, at least not without a dedicated GPU. This does not have one. Now, you can connect an eGPU, but I'm not sure if this has four lanes or not. I wasn't able to test that out, but that would be an interesting project on the side. Now, as far as battery is concerned, you're not going to do great, especially if you get the 4K model. That's why I want to steer you away from that. Go with the full HD model. With the 4K model, you're going to take the battery hit. You're going to get about four to five hours. That's 40% screen brightness. Doing YouTube, Netflix, some light gaming, some Photoshop, some light editing in terms of video editing. You're only going to get about four to five hours, which to me is not worth it. Go with the full HD model. You will do better in battery life, although not great. And to prove my point, check out Laptop Mag. They got six hours and three minutes, certainly well below the category average of eight hours and 27 minutes. Get the full HD model, although that is not great. It's still better than the 4K model in terms of battery life. Now, as far as thermals are concerned, it's an interesting mix here. You got a 15 minute video HD streaming on YouTube. The touchpad reached about 87 degrees Fahrenheit. Keyboard between the G and H keys, 86 degrees Fahrenheit. On the bottom, reached a very hot 109 degrees, which is way over the 95 degree comfort threshold. It has Bluetooth 4.2, no issues with pairing, and as far as wireless, it's 802.11 AC 8265, dual band wireless, which is really good. Range and reception was excellent. So to bring it all home, can I recommend the HP Spectre 13? Is it worth your hard-earned money? And the answer is yes, but there are some caveats that you need to be aware of. 
First, I do love its 4K display. It's simply gorgeous. Love its stunning design. It really looks great, especially in that new ceramic white. And I also like the fact that it has some decent audio and it really did decent in terms of performance. But there are some issues with it, especially that below average battery life with the 4K model. Even the full HD model was not terrific in terms of battery life it was so so the display could be brighter it came in under 300 nits and it did run hot even when you streamed a 15 minute hd youtube video but if you're in the market for one of the best looking stunning looking laptops with an excellent display and some good audio this may be your ticket earning this a score of 83 percent So what do you think about the HP Spectre 13? Now, I like it. I, I think the design is simply stunning. I love its new ceramic white. I also love the dark ash silver from last year. But I have to say that the battery life has left me wanting more, especially for this 4K model. I would recommend if you're going to get this, get the full HD model. You get about another hour to hour and a half more, maybe even more than that if you choose to go that route. The 4K model, although the display is simply gorgeous, as you saw in this video, really did well. The color was very good. The blacks were really deep. They really popped off the display as far as the colors are concerned. I really did love it. Uh, I just can't recommend it with the 4K display because of that significant battery life hit that you're going to take. Performance was good under the Core i5-8250U CPU, although it did perform a little less than the other 8250s that I've been reviewing as of late in the Core i5 category, but it actually was okay. I shouldn't say it was bad. The fact that it has Thunderbolt 3, two of them are really good. I'm not sure if they're four lanes. I don't have an eGPU to test it out to see if we can connect an eGPU. So if any of you have any experience with that, leave a comment in the comment section below. Let us know about that, especially with this model. But getting back to this, I really think the design is simply stunning. I, I don't know, there's not enough superlatives for me to say regarding this design. I think it's really excellent. Get, you're not going to get an SD card slot or a micro SD card slot. You're not going to get a full size USB 3A port on this, but they do give you that adapter, so that is good. They also give you the sleeve, which is also a nice touch, and they do give the extension cord, something that Apple refuses to do in their MacBook Pro line. And I, as far as price is concerned, you can actually get it for about $1,189 starting without the 4K display. But I think that's a good price. I think $1,399 is a little bit high, or well, certainly not out of most people's range, but I think it is a little bit high, especially when you can get the HP Spectre X360, which I think offers more than this device. But I'm curious to know what you think. Leave a comment in that comment section below. I am curious to know. So please hit the like button. Please subscribe. Please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook, on Twitter, Instagram, and of course our website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.